Welcome to the Techno Fundamental Report for May the 30th. Let's take a quick minute and look at Warren Buffett's investment strategy. You know, Buffett has had a tremendous impact on my thinking about mainly portfolio management. Not as much in stock selection and so forth because he's in a completely different ball game with, with the size of, of the amount of money that he manages. But Buffett basically points out in this book, The Buffett Way, that there's really two strategies that he would recommend. One is uh, focus investing, which is I'm going to mention here shortly. And then there's indexing, S&P 500 index fund. He is of the opinion that if you're not in a position to do focus investing, then probably the best option is indexing. Well, you know, I went through uh, a period of time myself where, you know, I went through the 1970s and we had hyperinflation and so forth. We'll talk about that. But basically, this is what focus investing is. It's reduced to its essence. Focus investing means that choose a few stocks that are likely to produce above average returns over the long haul, concentrate the bulk of your investments in those stocks, and have the fortitude to hold steady during any short-term market gyrations. He also talks about you should invest in what you know. So as a focus investor, if you've got, say, 10 positions, you can really learn about those 10 companies and really monitor them properly. Whereas when you get into 20, 30, 40, or 50 different securities, that job, math for me, mentally, I can't do it. I, it's just too much to absorb. Uh, never compromise on business quality. Uh, you know, you want to buy and hold is, is his plan if, if you can get into that situation. Diversification can be dangerous because you get off into areas you really don't understand. Uh, most news is noise, not news. Uh, investing isn't rocket science, but there's no easy button. It's, this is a hard job. Uh, the best moves are usually boring. Well, he, he makes a point there. You know, his biggest, one of his biggest winners was Coca-Cola, which is kind of boring. Now, the problem with uh, index funds, this article came out recently. It says, what goes up? And this was done by Andrew Lipstein. Basically, what's happening here with these index funds is that they're becoming so popular because the masses are basically moving in that direction. Now, the problem I have with it is, is that when I went through the 1970s, the Dow peaked here around 1966 at 1,000. This is 1,000 here. It took till 1982 from 66 to get back to 1,000 again. And in the meantime, you lost about 50% of your portfolio. So if you were indexing in here, it would have been incredibly difficult. So when I reflect back on it, I say, you know, what could I have done differently during this period? Well, it was basically Walmart. You had to find Walmart. So you had to be a focused investor looking at stocks like Walmart. Now, one thing Gerald Loeb talks about, and again, with, with the indexing, it's like set it and forget it. You don't have to do anything. It's, it's kind of brainless. But anyway, he says, there is no doubt that the average individual seeing this point of view accepted without question moves with the masses and adds his acceptance to the rest. Actually here, as in any, many, in many phase, other phases of life, the majority is decidedly wrong. In fact, the individual who does his own thinking must learn to question most mass movements of majority point of view, for they are usually wrong. So what Loeb is saying here, this is Gerald Loeb's book, Battle for Investment Survival, is that you really don't want to uh, get involved in what the masses are involved in simply because they tend to be wrong. I, I have to agree with this. Now, I wanted to mention a little bit about inflation. Uh, this was a report that came out basically saying is that core CPI prices saw their smallest gain in three years. So it does look like the inflation picture is starting to improve. Now, let's just hope that continues. Uh, artificial intelligence will power the stock market for the next day, decade, former Cisco CEO says. You know, you might want to pause your video player and read this, but basically he's saying, I think AI will be like the Internet except three to five times more powerful. It will change your life in every way. So back in 1995, you know, Cisco Systems started to invent something called the Internet Router which made it possible. So when you look at something like an NVIDIA, you must admit that they've got a major breakthrough in, in their ch chip technology. 
Uh, here we go with uh, uh, Dan Ives. He said, tech stocks are in our 1995 moment and poised to boom on the AI revolution. So here's a, a graph of Cisco, which I want to make a comparison here. I mean, we first started learning about Cisco around 1995, and you can see that the move was quite, quite dramatic, and then it all peaked in 2000. So you had a major growth stock cycle, pretty much led by Cisco, Amazon, uh, stocks like that. And you can see here the, the dramatic move. So what Dan, Ive, Dan Ives is saying is that we are in a 1995 moment, which would be an incredibly great. Now, so here's NVIDIA. You know, we first started uh, investing in NVIDIA back in 2018. However, you know, it, it kind of went through a rough patch here. In 22, at the bear market, the stock dropped dramatically, 50 to 70 percent. But then, boom, it's taken off, just like that graph with Cisco. This is, this is 1995, is what Dan Ives is saying. Now, let's take a look at the market. The market is, uh, the, the NASDAQ is being somewhat held up by NVIDIA because it's a, it's a major component. So you can see that the NASDAQ is looking pretty solid. However, if you look at some of the other indexes, here's the S&P 500. You can kind of somewhat see a roll over here, which is, is not positive. We want to see it hold these, these moving averages. Here's the small caps. Now you can see the problem again. It's rolling over. We're breaking through some of the key moving averages. So I would say maybe right now would be a good time to be somewhat cautious. Uh, anything that's not acting right, you might want to take a look at. Uh, however, the good news here is, and again, it's because the NASDAQ is holding up so well due to NVIDIA, the aggression index is actually making a new high for this particular cycle. And that's a very big positive. Remember, we're comparing the NASDAQ, which would be NVIDIA included, uh, to consumer staples, which would be things like toothpaste and toilet paper. So we go with aggressive versus defensive. And when the aggressive is moving up like this, it is it, it's somewhat of a mixed bag. Like I said, the indexes are showing some weaknesses. We're not seeing it a whole lot in the individual stock names, but the, the Dow has really been kind of taking a hit. Let's take a look at the three economic indicators. Here's the problem. We've got interest rates popping back up above 4.6% on that 10-year Treasury note. So with inflation and everything going on, hopefully inflation is cooling down. But we are seeing a rise in interest rates here. Price of oil has been pretty steady. However, got somewhat of a bounce here, close to $80 a barrel. Financial stocks have pulled back with the market as well. Okay, here's a couple stocks we can look at. Now, one of the reports that I read this week was about how much energy is going to be required to build these, uh, these major data centers. They, they use tremendous amounts of electricity. And so AI, the, the numbers are just mind-boggling as to how much energy is going to be required. And so the report basically says we're going to have to have nuclear, we're going to have to have natural gas, we're going to have to have oil, we're going to have to have coal. And we're going to have to have solar, and we're going to have to have wind. They're going to have to have it all because in order to meet the demands that are coming, we're going to all of the above is going to be be important. So here's first solar. You can see here major volume, major gap up. People are realizing that solar may be a partial solution to the energy situation. Here's another company called GE Vernova. We just took recently took a position in this stock. We also do own first solar. Now you can see here again we got some some decent volume. This is a spin-off of General Electric. General Electric is now three companies and one of these is GE Vernova. They provide services and contract work for all the utilities. So this is basically a way to play the build out on the utility industry. Interesting company. Uh, I did want to mention, you know, because people talk to me all the time, well, you're buying that at an all-time new high. Well, I want to make a point. Back in 2003, we bought Apple at an all-time new high, and that was just the beginning of the move. So, you know, buying at highs is not necessarily a bad thing. In fact, I think it's a good thing because when a stock's making new highs, it's telling you that everything is going well uh, for the company, whereas when stocks are making new lows, such as uh, Boeing here, you know, you can see here with Boeing, they're just having all kinds of problems. And the stock made a low here, uh, tried to rally a little bit. Now, it would be really important that it hold this prior low. But 
my general rule is don't ever buy a stock in a downtrend. Always look for uptrends. That's that's basic rule is up is good, down is bad. So if you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you very much.